Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about um, file access methods. Uh, just again, some broad overview. This is going to be a quick one. So the goals of today is to talk about um, a couple different methods of um, file access. The first, sequential access. The second, direct relative access. And then we'll talk a little bit about index file and memory mapped files. So sequential access, this is the most common. So you have a file and it's going to be processed in order, um, in a sequential order. This is the most common implementation. Um, so if this is your file, if you're at this current location, it's going to just read all the way from if it's position to the end. And you can also rewind it um, and to the beginning, so you can you can move you can reposition yourself within the file, but then it's going to read um, it one at a time. So some drawbacks here. So since we're reading it sequentially, if for instance if we're loading, let's say we're loading a text file, and um, we really want this information. So this is the important information that we want. This is like an appendix, whatever. And that's the information that we want. So if we're, if we're loading in things sequentially, um, then we're going, it's going to start at the beginning and load all of the files. So it's going to be a while actually until we load the section that, um, that we, we want to actually see. This um, problem is a little bit more uh, evident when you think of like databases. So in databases, if you have to wait until everything, all of the files are loaded in, uh, it's going to take a while. Um, and this gets even more exacerbated when um, you think of even larger and larger data sets. So an alternative to this is direct or relative access. So the, um, in this scenario, the file is made up of different um, fixed length logical records. So this is your file and it's broken up into to records. And then these records can be read in in any order. So however, wherever the head is maybe on the disk, whatever's near us, it can just go ahead and grab those parts of the file and just bring them to you immediately. So the pro here is that you can get more data to you faster. So you can load things a little bit faster, especially when it's larger data. However, you might not load the very beginning of the data to start with. You may load something in the middle. So for instance, one example is, so if I have this um, file that has a bunch of information about airline flights, um, if I want to find information about flight maybe 704, then um, I, if I wanted to do it sequentially, I'd have to load in all of this information before I got to 704. But um, with um, direct or relative accessing, I can directly index into this and get this back. And the way that that is done is um, by using usually typically a hash function. So I have some sort of hash um, that will let me uh, index into the record that I immediately want or that part of the file that I want and that will come back to me. Another way you can do access to files is by using index files. And so what this is, is you create an index file that has a pointer to various blocks of, um, of your memory, of your storage. And those will equate to different maybe parts of a file or different files themselves. So you would have this um, large index file. So that's one drawback I already have written size. So this these index files get rather large. Um, and it will list maybe file names and their logical record number. So basically where um, a, a pointer to where they're sitting on um, so there's another maybe intermediate step before translating it directly onto um, to disk. But this is kind of showing the overview of it, that you have a index file and that that will let you index into where something is sitting um, on the disk. So the drawback to this is that you have um, 
this additional file that you need to uh, maintain, indexing. I, I want to say Dropbox at least used to do it um, because I would always get these. Um, I don't want to call them errors, but they would come up and say that it's indexing the file. So this, this actually takes a while, and the index files can get really, really big. Another way that you can do this is using, using memory mapped files. So what this does is it actually maps files into main memory, and this has a lot of advantages. So one, it's shareable. So now if, so this is disk file, and these are the two processes, if they want to use the same um, bit of physical memory where that file is, if they if you map it into um, main memory, then each process knows exactly where it's sitting in main memory. So now, um, alternatively, what would have had to happen is, so say um, these are all loaded in first, and then process B comes and decides, okay, I need one. What it would have to do is it have to go and it have to go to the disk and read one in. Um, but now, since it's mapped into a memory spot, uh, now it knows, okay, no, I don't have to do that. I can just go directly to where it's sitting in main memory and just use it. Um, it also doesn't require any extra steps to update the data, right? Because we already have something in place for this. As soon as a block is loaded in, when it's scheduled out, it's gonna be written back to, to, main mem to storage anyway. Right, we already have that set in place, so it doesn't require any extra steps. There's two types um, worth noting. So persisted. So this is an example of persisted here, where um, all of the memory that's mapped into main memory actually exists on the disk file. But there's also non-persisted, which means that it's kind of virtual um, space. It's not actually associated with anything that's being technically stored. Um, this is good for um, inter-process communication, so you can make like a temporary um, spot here where it can be used for this process to communicate with this process, so you can use it for packet um, and message passing. But However, non-persisted memory does require a garbage collector, so after this is not being used anymore, there needs to be something that comes along and says, um, okay, marks this part as, okay, it can be cleared out, it's no longer being used, so now something else can use it. Quick brief overview. Let me know if you have any questions um, or if anything wasn't clear. Thanks.